And welcome on behalf of the Family Planning 2020. Thank you for coming this morning uh, as we near the end of the conference. Uh, my name is Robert Clay. I'm the Deputy uh, Assistant Administrator for Global Health at USAID. Today I'm joined on stage by a dynamic group of people who personally, who personify the energy and enthusiasm that propels Family Planning 2020 forward. They're here to talk about the progress that we've made since the London Summit on Family Planning towards our goals of expanding access to family planning information, services, and supplies for an additional 120 million women and girls in the world's poorest countries. A little over a year ago, representatives from 150 countries, multilateral agencies, NGOs, foundations, the research community, the private sector, pledged to work together to ensure that all women, no matter where they live, will have access to the information, services, and supplies they need to determine the course of their futures. Family Planning 2020 carries this momentum forward. I, ho I hope you have all had a chance to pick up a copy of the Family Planning 2020 Progress Report that was launched here on Wednesday. It includes many highlights from the work that countries are doing, and here are just a few. Over the past year, one quarter of the commitment-making countries have launched detailed, costed national family planning strategies, including Burkina Faso, Kenya, Niger, Senegal, and Zambia. One third of the commitment-making countries have increased their national budget allocations for family planning services or supplies, including Ethiopia, Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, and Uganda. And half of the commitment-making countries have held national family planning conferences. Quite a, a good uh, progress report so far. This year has also seen unprecedented collaboration between governments, NGOs, foundations, the research community, and the private sector to train and retrain health workers, deploy new models of service delivery, and, imp and improve commodity distribution and management systems to ensure that family planning programs reach underserved communities. The United States government is proud to have been, and proud to be a core member of the Family Planning 2020 and to support the goals of the initiative. Annually, USAID supports more than 84 million women around the world with access to contraceptives. These women will continue to receive the support they need through 2020. And in combination with this and the efforts pledged at the London Summit, we will ensure that by 2020, 380 million women and girls in the poorest countries of the world will have the right to determine whether and when to have children. We will also help to prevent the deaths of 1.3 million children under the age of five. It is now my privilege to introduce um, uh, the upcoming video. The United Kingdom was the host and the lead organizer for the London Sun Summit and continues to play an integral role as a core partner in Family Planning 2020 to ensure that all girls and women have the opportunity to shape their own future. The Honorable Lynn Featherstone, Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for International Development of the United Kingdom, is steadfastly dedicated to the high impact investment and collaborative partnership to achieve the goals of Family Planning 2020. Lynn was here at the conference earlier this week, but regrettably she could not attend this session and wanted to share this with you instead by the video. Can we have the video, please? This year, we have seen transformational progress, both at the global and country level. The power of Family Planning 2020 is a transformational approach that lies in the fact that it belongs to each one of you, each one of us. Today, in this room, we have governments, governments from Nigeria, governments from Indonesia, governments from Kenya and Uganda, we have civil society members. We have people that have been working in this field for a very long time. 
And we want to thank each and every one of you for the work that you are doing. Ying started this conference saying, we are family planning. Well, today I want to say that we are family planning 2020 and we want to recognize your actions. You are all pioneering new paths, making family planning become a reality for women, girls, and families across the world. With the government of the UK making a pledge to support accountability today, we also want to showcase accountability in action in Zambia. The leadership of the First Lady of Zambia and the Ministry of Health has been a shining light to many of us. I would like to ask Dr. Mary Nambao, Deputy Director, Mother and Child Health, Ministry of Community Development, Maternal and Child Health to highlight the progress made by the government of Zambia. Dr. Nambabo, please come and join us. Good morning. Um, I'm here to talk about the progress since the last London Summit. Actually, my presentation was going to end at just showing that we've got the strategic plan, but because I've got five minutes, I'll make the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, and like all other countries, you know that um, it's, tra it's uh, a tragedy to lose a woman uh, when, they are, when they are pregnant, but to lose one who didn't even want to be pregnant in the first place because you have such a high unmet need, I think that's criminal. So when our first lady came to the London summit and our, our minister, they made the following commitments. Uh, the first one was to double the budget for family planning commodities, to increase the use of community health assistance and trained community-based distributors, to expand FP access to underdeserved communities, to engage religious and traditional leaders in promoting dialogue and demand. So where are we now? We started from July 2012, and um, like I showed, we've already got the strategic plan, and uh, we launched it, and we disseminated it. And we already budgeted for 2014, and our leaders have, served, have committed that we are going to have an increased um, budget towards family planning. I just wanted to show off some of the analysis which is in our strategic plan. Uh, you can see that we went into details to look at our regions and we noticed that some of our regions have a higher potential for growth and we calculated how we are going to increase the CPR, the mean CPR per region and we also calculated how we are going to move from one uh, CPR to the next by 2020 and we knew the number of new users who we are going to have, and the total for the whole country came to about 800, over 800,000. So what did we put in our, in, in our strategic plan? We have about six strategic objectives. We said we'll strengthen the demand for family planning. We'll have uh, effectively, target we'll effectively target the adolescents and the youth. We'll build capacity to deliver quality services. We'll increase coverage for rural and underdeserved populations. We'll improve distribution system at all levels. Then we'll strengthen family planning governance and program coordination. So as Zambia, that's where we are. We've started even with the IBP initiative to have the best practices uh, documented. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Namao. FP 2020 depends on country-driven actions and leadership, and we want to thank you and your government for your catalytic actions this year. Well, now our agenda shifts. We want to continue the rolling thunder of commitments that were started in London, and we have five distinguished governments here today making their pledges. Miramar, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the Democratic Republic of, of Congo, Mauritania, Benin and Guinea. I think you will agree that all five represent some of the most neglected countries in the field of family planning. But today, this will change. I can't help but highlight that four of the five countries are in Francophone Africa. I served in Mali for six years. 
I am proud of the fact that they are part of a growing movement of Francophone leaders on family planning, on health, and on development. This represents a remarkable historic transformation. Almost one third of Africans live in Francophone Africa, and it has been a neglected region by donors and foundations for a very long time. So today, I have the great honor and great privilege to introduce you to Mr. Dieudonné Kouete, advisor to the Prime Minister of the Dem De Democratic Republic of Congo. Please, Mr. Kouete. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, et félicitations aux organisateurs pour la réussite et, et le succès de cette conférence. Il convient de noter que le contexte actuel de la République démocratique du Congo est dominé par des récentes opérations militaires à l'est du pays qui viennent de mettre fin à la rébellion du M23. Ceci a pour effet les retours progressifs des populations dans leurs villages. Cette situation requiert l'attention particulière du gouvernement et n'a pas permis les déplacements des hautes autorités de la République qui ont été invitées à cette conférence. Veuillez accepter leurs excuses. C'est au nom du gouvernement de la RDC, conduit par son Excellence Matata Pogno Mapon, Premier ministre et chef du gouvernement, sous le leadership de son Excellence Joseph Kabila Kabangé, président de la République et chef de l'État, que nous lisons la présente déclaration d'engagement de la RDC sur la planification familiale. En effet, la vision de la RDC en matière de planification familiale est cristallisée sur le concept de parenté responsable et de naissance désirable. C'est à ce titre qu'en 1972, la RDC a été le pionnier dans la mise en œuvre d'un programme de planification familiale qui a réalisé des progrès substantiels jusqu'en 1990. Cependant, ces efforts ont été annihilés par des crises multiformes que le pays a connues. Le but du programme de planification familiale est de s'assurer que chaque grossesse ne soit ni un fardeau ni une menace de mort pour la mère et l'enfant. De même, elle ne doit pas être une cause de déséquilibre mental pour le père. Chaque naissance doit donc être désirée. À cet effet, la constitution de la RDC, dans ses articles 45, 47, 48 et 49, consacre les droits et l'accès aux services sociaux de base à toute la population congolaise. C'est dans ces cadres que la volonté exprimée de son Excellence Joseph Kabila Kabangé, président de la République et chef de l'État, est de faire de la RDC un pays émergent à l'horizon 2030. Dans cette perspective, la redynamisation de la planification familiale, telle que stipulée dans les documents de la stratégie de croissance et de réduction de la pauvreté et des CRP de deuxième génération, permettra de dégager des dividendes démographiques nécessaire pour un développement durable et inclusif. Pour ce faire, des actions concrètes du gouvernement sont notamment 1. La mise à disposition en 2013 d'un montant équivalent à 1 million de dollars américains pour l'achat des contraceptifs. 2. L'ouverture d'une ligne budgétaire pour la planification familiale et la santé de la reproduction dans le budget de l'État. 2. 3 plus tôt l'élaboration d'un plan stratégique sur la planification familiale pour la période 2014-2020. Ce plan vise d'atteindre, petit a, un taux de prévalence contraceptive moderne de 19% en 2020 contre 5,4% en 2010. Petit b, au moins 2 millions 100 000 utilisatrices de méthodes contraceptives modernes en 2020 contre 700 000 en 2010. Cependant, les défis majeurs pour atteindre ces objectifs sont essentiellement 1. Le passage à l'échelle de l'offre des services de planification familiale et la santé de la reproduction sur l'ensemble du pays, soit 516 zones de santé, 
qui nécessite une mobilisation des ressources additionnelles tant internes qu'externes. Deux, l'amélioration des performances de notre système de santé pour rapprocher les services de santé de qualité, dont ceux de la santé de la reproduction des populations bénéficiaires. Trois, la sécurité à l'est du pays, qui implique un appui de la communauté internationale, de l'Union européenne, des organisations sous-régionales et locales. Ceci aura pour bénéfice, entre autres, la réduction significative de violences sexuelles qui sont utilisées comme armes de guerre. Pour relever ces défis, le gouvernement de la RDC s'est engagé à 1. Protéger les adolescentes contre le mariage précoce au travers de programmes d'éducation, de sensibilisation, de réinsertion sociale et d'autonomisation de la femme. 2. Réviser des dispositions du Code pénal qui s'opposent à la promotion de la parenté responsable et des naissances désirables. 3. Accroître progressivement les ressources domestiques destinées aux investissements dans le secteur de la santé. 4. Enfin, augmenter progressivement sa contribution pour la mise en œuvre du plan stratégique national 2014-2020, notamment l'achat des contraceptifs si cette période. Je vous remercie. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Uh, Sono Abe. Uh, Sono is a senior advisor for strategic initiatives at Pathfinder International, where she works on sexual and reproductive health programs development in Asia. She has advanced global and field advocacy strategies for family planning and serves as the technical lead for integrated health and environmental programs in East Africa. Sono has for years been dedicated to gaining political commitment in Miramar for family planning, and she will introduce our next speaker, Sono. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, today I feel very honored and extremely excited to be standing here to introduce Myanmar's commitment to FP 2020, to be announced by His Excellency, Mr. Koko Lat, Ambassador of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar to Kuwait. Myanmar is a country in Southeast Asia between India and China, and it also shares borders with Bangladesh, Thailand, and Laos. It has a population of about 60 million. In the past, the Myanmar government wanted to encourage more births among its population. So the policy and cultural attitudes towards family planning was traditionally not very favorable towards the availability of a full basket of contraceptive choices, especially in the public sector. Regardless of these limitations, some international NGOs, multilateral as well as bilateral and private donors stepped in to support Myanmar's reproductive health programs, including contraceptive access under the birth spacing program, knowing that many women were ending up in hospitals with the consequences of unsafe abortion. One of these donor agencies was the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, whom I was working for when I first stepped foot in Myanmar in 1998. I cannot step away from this podium today without acknowledging Her Excellency Dr. Ten Ten Te, Deputy Minister of Health, who had to cancel her trip to Addis Ababa last week due to unavoidable circumstances. I first met Dr. Ten Ten Te on October 2nd, 1998 at the Ministry of Health. In my notes from that meeting, I wrote, need to follow up with her. She is a gatekeeper and a Johns Hopkins alumna. <laughs> Fast forward to 2013, she is still the same passionate and tireless advocate for family planning that I knew from so many years ago. As Deputy Minister of Health, she was the chief architect of this FP 2020 commitment, which is a major global commitment global announcement that will no doubt improve lives of millions of men, women, and youth in Myanmar. 
I am happy to report that the Deputy Minister is also organizing a press conference and commemorative ceremony today in the capital city of Naypyidaw with development partners to celebrate this joyous occasion. Myanmar now needs the urgent support of the global health and development community to accelerate progress. And as part of the Pathfinder team, I'm looking forward to working with many of you in this room who have been part of this transformation. I would now like to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Gokolat to tell us about this exciting commitment. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great privilege and an opportunity for me to be here with you at this great capital of Ethiopia to share our country's statement on behalf of the government of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar to us family planning 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start our new journey to us family planning 2020 by committing the following. We launched a family planning program under the name of Path Spacing. Policymakers would, Myanmar is here to ensure that policymakers would acknowledge the critical role of family planning that would leverage the demographic divided in Myanmar, leading towards economic growth and development. Minister of Health, we work towards increasing the resources allocated to family planning in state budgets. It will also seek to boost partnerships with he, the private sector, civil society, organizations, and other development partners for service delivered on wider scale. Multi-stakeholder collaboration will be strengthened through concerned efforts to expand the forum of family planning under the umbrella of Myanmar health sector. Coordinating committee and create executive working group on family planning as a branch of mother and newborn and child health technical strategic group. Continue to strengthen reproductive health community security, logistic management information system and capacities at all levels for improved projection, forecasting, procurement, supply, storage, systematic distribution, inventory control, and update by the end use of life-saving medicines for maternal and newborn health and contraceptive supplies as part of global project on supply chain system management. Health sector reform has ensured resource-based management through new initiatives for effective fund flow mechanism and internal audit June. Objectives increase CPR from 41% to 50% by 2050 and over 60 by 2020. Reduce and met need to less than 10% by 2015, currently 12%. Increase demand satisfaction from 67% to 80% by 2015. Improving method mix with increased use of long acting permanent methods and decentralizing to the districts. Policy political commitments. NEMA aims to strengthen the policy of provision of clinical contraceptive methods by trained skilled nurse, midwives, and volunteers through better collaboration among multi-stakeholders within the context of Nebido Accord. It also plans to implement people-centered policies to address the question of regional disparity and inequality between urban and rural and rich and poor. Financial commitments. NEMA has committed to include budget line for family planning starting from 2011 to 2012 fiscal year. And we have used US dollar 1.29 million equivalent years to purchase contraceptives during 2012 to 2013 financial period in an effort to make adequate resources available for FP service. The government of Myanmar plans to spend more health budget annually as now being budget deficit is 50%. Nema commit to increasing health budget to cover nearly 3 million eligible couples cumulatively by 2020. 
program and service delivery commitments. There are commitments to increasing user-friendly SRH and FP service at an all sub head service outlet, both in public and private. Nima will monitor to ensure quality to care is strengthened, providing informed consent and choice, and extending support to women to continue use of FP and constellation of service. We will also review and develop the next cycle of five-year strategy plan for reproductive health through consultative process based upon our experience and future needs. We hosted the national workshop on formulating country roadmaps on the commission of information and accountability for women's and children's health in February 2013. It is planned to host FPRA's best Friday's national conference in 2014 and 8 APCR SHR national conference in 2060 with sub substantial assistance from UNFPA, Myanmar has become one of the 46 GPRHCS countries that will be providing broader support for family planning service in Myanmar, utilizing the existing workforce at its optimal capacity. Realizing the crucial role of family planning in health and population development, Myanmar is here to reiterate its commitment for family planning 2020 through full access, full choice. Ladies and gentlemen, my statement will be incomplete without paying compliments to the organizers and hosts who have made this conference as historical event on behalf of the Myanmar. I sincerely appreciate them for making this gathering wonderful and informative. Thank you all for listening so carefully and making this even interesting. Our next speaker will be Thomas Debois, who is the policy advisor for population issues for the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Amongst his duties, he is in charge of elaborating the strategy of following and coordinating the operations funds, and programs of the French government, international policy, and sexual reproductive health. Thomas. Thank you, Robert. C'est un, avec un grand plaisir que la France s'associe à cet événement afin de célébrer les progrès réalisés depuis le sommet de Londres sur la planification familiale. L'accès à la contraception est un impératif éthique et politique, c'est un droit fondamental. C'est aussi un facteur d'efficacité des politiques que la France place en priorité dans ses politiques nationales et dans son action internationale. Comme vous le savez, la France s'est engagée à consacrer 100 millions d'euros au soutien des programmes de planification familiale en Afrique de l'Ouest francophone. Dans cette région, la prévalence contraceptive stagne depuis de nombreuses années. Moins de 15% des femmes en Union, dans l'âge de procréer, ont accès à un contraceptif moderne en moyenne en Afrique de l'Ouest, contre 25% en moyenne dans les pays les moins développés. Le risque de grossesse adolescente en Afrique de l'Ouest est en moyenne deux fois plus élevé que dans le monde. Pour répondre à ces enjeux, la France, avec l'Agence française américaine de développement, la Fondation Bill et Minda Gates, la Fondation William et Flora Hewlett, ont décidé d'associer leurs efforts pour créer le partenariat de Ouagadougou en 2011, aux côtés de neuf pays d'Afrique de l'Ouest francophone, le Bénin, le Burkina Faso, la Côte d'Ivoire, la Guinée, le Mali, la Mauritanie, le Niger, le Sénégal et le Togo. Ce partenariat a notamment permis l'élaboration de plans d'action nationaux chiffrés, détaillés par activité et déclinés par région. Ces programmes d'action peuvent être communiqués aux bailleurs internationaux, afin de pallier les lacunes de financement. Ces plans d'action ont contribué à repositionner la planification familiale au, au cœur des stratégies nationales en matière de santé reproductive, maternelle et infantile. C'est une première victoire. Ils ont surtout permis d'engager les gouvernements vers l'atteinte d'objectifs ambitieux qui visent pour la plupart à doubler le taux de prévalence contraceptive d'ici 2015. Soyons clairs, il s'agit là d'un immense pas en avant je souhaite à cette occasion saluer les représentants du ministère de la Santé 
de Mauritanie, de Bénin, Monsieur le ministre de la Santé de Guinée, ici présents, qui vont nous présenter en détail la nature de leur engagement. La France soutiendra directement ces plans d'action à travers l'ensemble de son dispositif d'aide multilatéral et bilatéral en matière de planification familiale. Alors soyons tout aussi clairs, et pour être juste, il s'agit là d'un immense effort de mise en œuvre pratique et concrète du principe d'alignement, qui est aussi un immense pas en avant. Ce modèle associant l'engagement des pays et l'alignement des bailleurs est aujourd'hui proposé à la communauté internationale grâce à l'initiative FP2020. Et notre seule présence, je crois, tous réunis ici à cette tribune pour discuter des questions de planification familiale, de droits et de santé sexuelle et reproductive, montre les progrès remarquables de coordination entre partenaires, entre initiatives que nous avons réalisées. Alors, il s'agit de montrer ce progrès, mais il s'agit aussi d'un appel sur la nécessité de faire plus, de faire mieux, en faisant ensemble. Je vous remercie et j'appelle sans plus tarder Monsieur le Dr Al Mokhtar Danjabinan, qui est conseiller au sein du ministère de la Santé de Mauritanie. Merci beaucoup. Excellences, honorables assistance, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs, nous sommes contents d'être parmi vous aujourd'hui pour lancer la planification familiale dans notre pays. Ainsi, la Mauritanie s'est engagée résolument en faveur de l'atteinte des objectifs du millénaire pour le développement d'ici 2015. Cet engagement s'inscrit dans le cadre des priorités du gouvernement telles que retenues par le cadre stratégique de lutte contre la pauvreté, le programme national de développement du secteur de la santé, ainsi que l'initiative présidentielle pour la lutte contre la mortalité maternelle. L'amélioration de l'offre des services et les indicateurs de planification familiale constituent un choix stratégique du gouvernement pour mieux repositionner la planification familiale et répondre aux recommandations des différentes conférences sur Population, planification familiale et développement à Ouagadougou et à la conférence de Sali au Sénégal sur l'engagement de la société civile en faveur de la planification familiale en septembre 2011. Ainsi, l'engagement politique du gouvernement s'est manifesté à travers la mise en place d'une cellule pour l'accélération de l'atteinte des OMD Santé 4, 5 et 6, les plaidoyers pour la mobilisation des ressources en faveur de la santé maternelle, néonatale et infantile et la volonté de réduire l'indice synthétique de fécondité de 4,5 à 4,2 enfants par femme d'ici 2015. Forte de cet engagement politique, la Mauritanie a développé en 2013, à travers un processus participatif et inclusif, un plan d'action national pour le repositionnement de la planification familiale pour la période 2014-2018, qui traduit les priorités du gouvernement en la matière et crée un cadre de référence pour le partenariat et la mobilisation des ressources dans ce domaine. Ce plan indique clairement les ambitions de l'État à rehausser le niveau de taux de prévalence contraceptive de 11 à 18,5 d'ici 2018. Une stratégie nationale de sécurisation des produits de la santé et de la reproduction est validée depuis 2009 et mise en œuvre, démontrant ainsi qu'il existe qu'il n'existe aucune barrière légale à l'accès aux produits et services de planification familiale. Sur le plan financier, l'État s'est engagé qu'à partir de 2014, une ligne budgétaire dédiée à la sécurisation des produits de la santé et de la reproduction sera attribuée à la planification familiale, comme il s'est engagé aux côtés de ses partenaires pour la mobilisation des ressources additionnelles pour la mise en œuvre du plan de repositionnement de la planification familiale. Sur le plan programmatique, le plan de repositionnement de la planification familiale avec son plan opérationnel de mise en œuvre jusqu'au niveau de la Mukata, qui est le niveau opérationnel du système de santé, donne une vision assez claire sur les interventions clés et les problèmes structurels que le pays veut résoudre. Étant engagé en faveur du repositionnement de la planification familiale, la Mauritanie invite ses partenaires et bailleurs de fonds à l'aider à atteindre les objectifs de son plan d'action et réaffirme son adhésion au partenariat de Ouagadougou, souscrit en février 2011 
et aux principes et objectifs de l'initiative FP 2020 et se positionne sur la mobilisation des ressources nécessaires au programme. Avant de finir, nous tenons à remercier le peuple et le gouvernement de la République fédérale démocratique d'Éthiopie pour le pôle de développement en matière de la santé et de la reproduction et surtout en matière de planification familiale que nous avons vu à visiter, à avoir au niveau du poste de santé et de centre de santé de Wara et de Mikawa. Merci beaucoup.